Hi, this is Dr. Janine and I welcome you today. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm not microphoned up today, but I'm in my office shed and it's a little bit echoey. So I think this might work. Okay. Today we're going to explore the power of letting go and the importance of letting go. And I am coming at this from a person who struggles with this. And you know what? I thought about it and I thought we all struggle with this, don't we? No matter what we're letting go of, there's a struggle. So let's get started. So we're going to be talking about the aspect of letting go and the importance of letting go. And hopefully you can hear me really well because I don't have my microphone. I'm just kind of winging it here. I did not really intend on doing a video today. I have so many other things that I want to do in my office area here, but I thought that this was important enough because I struggle with it, especially when it comes to human beings and those that I love. So throughout life, we are called upon to let go of things, material things. For me, my books. I am so adamant about keeping my books because they hold a certain amount of value to me. And that value through my education, through gaining knowledge, you know, I, I don't think there's ever going to be a time where I won't be reading. And so I'm always obtaining more. And the thing is, is I had to come to a point where I needed to go through a cycle of donating them. And there are certain aspects of them that are very precious to me. But I have had to realize that the knowledge that I learned from them and the notes that I've taken, the things that I've journaled, they all are precious to me and they're all there. So, you know, I had to really meditate and rationalize it for myself and let go of some of those things so that I can move on because we're always growing. We're always learning. We're always uh, transforming. We're going from one aspect of our life to another. We're always transitioning into something new. And as we do, we need to obtain new knowledge, new wisdom. Some of us meditate for that. I do that. And when we do, we gain knowledge, we gain wisdom, but, and I don't think we need to let go of that. You know, just saying, don't let go of that because it's a good practice. But, you know, sometimes when we move, we have to let go of the memories that were left behind inside of the homes or places that we have lived. Sometimes it's a city, it's a state. Sometimes it's just the house or home itself. And I found that that is a time of grief. When we let go, there are memories, whether they're good memories, whether they're difficult memories, we need to process them and then let them go because we can't be like a boat anchor. And that's how those things become to us if we continue to hold on to them. And it's like they hold us back from moving forward. And so a good practice is to say, okay, you have served me well, home. You served me well, books. You have served me well, whatever it might be. And so now I am free to let you go. I am free to let go of the memories. I'm free of let, letting go uh, of some of the difficulties, holding on to some of the good things because we've learned during the process, right? So those are the things we want to obtain in our treasure chest. And by treasure chest, I mean that place right here inside the heart space. Where it becomes difficult is when we have to let go or we are forced to let go of loved ones. And that comes when our loved ones have passed. And I have endured this when my son passed when he was in the army and more recently my oldest daughter. And, you know, this is a, a difficult grief process. And it's one that I don't blame anyone for what they might go through while they're going through the grief of their child. Okay, because we all grieve differently. We all go through um, different situations. 
and while we're grieving and different feelings, different emotions, because they all held different meaning in our lives. And I mean, the memories, <laughs> they all hold different meaning in our lives. And I have good ones and I have not so good ones. So, you know, letting go of some of those lessons that I've learned has been a process. It's something that I don't pressure myself for or with because I know eventually I will come to a point where I'm free again. And meaning I know that love is here and love was there and love will always be. It's a truth that I always hold on to, but it's like my grief has to catch up with it. Now I'm telling you this experience because it might be yours as well. And I'm still in the process. You can tell because I'm still talking about it. <laughs> so it's there. So that's where it becomes very difficult. Now as parents, and I had five children, I don't know how many you have had, or maybe you are thinking of having them. It does not come with an owner's manual, excuse me, when we have a child. We don't have a, a map that we are supposed to follow to help us through those times of helping them grow up and also letting go of when they are grown. And our duty as a parent is basically over as far as raising them in that capacity. Our duty as a parent is never over as far as being there for them. And see, this is where it's a slippery slope here because we have to let go of them or need to let go of them as an adult child and some of their issues and their problems and allowing them to um, make their own mistakes and their own issues and their own problems will come up and they need to feel some of those mountains and hills and valleys and some of the issues sometimes yes some of the real hard setbacks and there's the parent that's inside of you and i'm speaking for myself and i'm sure you have probably endured this as well if you're a parent that says i need to help them fix this because we've always had to be there for them to help them fix whatever it is and if they ask for wisdom yes we'll be there for them but sometimes we need to take a step back and it's very hard to let go of not control but the passion as a parent and the thing that we have exercised for over 18 years per child right and we have become uh, practiced at it and it's like, okay, we have this wisdom. We understand this now. We want to give this to them. We want to continue to be that support, but we need to remember when they ask. Sometimes they don't. So, you know, we kind of interject things, but it's very, very difficult to let go of something that you have done for a very long period of time. Raising a child or children is part of a lifetime i mean is a, it's a good chunk of a lifetime and so when you've done something for so very long and then all of a sudden that job is complete as far as them living in your household and you know being that parent that needs to uh, bring the rules and the regulations and and hopefully just the wisdom and the knowledge and the discipline whatever however you choose to parent and you know i i don't i don't feel like i ever wanted to be a policeman or a, or you know someone who was the oversoul for my children but as a parent it's very hard not to because we don't want them to trip and fall down we watch our children as they try to learn to walk and they trip and they fall down every single time. I mean, it is inevitable. No child or baby learning to walk gets it the very first time. And we have to allow them to hurt themselves a little bit. It helps bring them balance in life. And sometimes we are there to catch them. And as a parent, we need to learn and have the wisdom as to when we activate <laughs> and bring in all of the heart troops and we go catch them or we allow them to fall on their face and let go. Of course
course, we don't want them to be completely harmed. So, you know, we're like this, trying to balance ourselves as they balance themselves. But as they go through life and as they grow up, they're still learning to walk and they're still going to trip. And there's a part of us that wants to try to balance that. And sometimes we need to let them fall. And that is a very hard thing to do, extremely hard. There is never a more wonderful moment after practicing parenthood for a very long period of time when my children say, Mom, I really need help in this. I need your, I need your opinion. I need your wisdom. How do I get through this? What should I do? Or this happened in my life. And that invites me to then therefore give my input. And I love that because I have trained for this. I'm like, this is my time. I've trained for this. You might be grown, but I have practiced this for a very long time. Now, where it really does get hard is when our children are no longer with us and we've practiced caring for them for a very long time. We are met with the difficulty of having to face the reality that they don't need us for that anymore. They do need us to love them because love is eternal and it never dies. And that is my belief and I have to stick with that. But, and that, you know, honestly, that's a saving grace. I, you know, knowing that love never dies is a saving grace for getting through my grief. But not having their physical being on the planet is a very hard thing to let go of. So as we're letting go and finding the power to let go, we're going through a shift and a transition. We are shifting spiritually anyway as a spiritual being, but even in our physical life, we also shift as well. Our physical, emotional, and spiritual part of us shifts all together. It goes through our personality, our life experience, our spiritual wisdom, all of it is a part of the whole. We can't separate any part of it at this point as we're going through this physical experience. And so we um, reach for things to empower ourselves and new things at certain facets of our lives in order to uh, bring interest into our lives so that we can find our purpose. Whatever you're mostly passionate about, look for that because that's part of your purpose. If it's giving to others, that's part of your purpose. If it's waking up and having gratitude, which by the way, opens the portal to your heart and your heart space, that is part of your purpose. And if your children and all of your moves and all of the things that you've gone through in life, your education, those are all behind you. You have raised them. You've raised yourself to this point. And you're at a point where you have the freedom to do new things. You need to embrace it. And sometimes that is very difficult. There is a power in having to learn to embrace a, a certain freedom. And when you have it all of a sudden, it's like, what do you do with it? You have things in your mind that you know you want to do and that you've thought about for many, many years. I know I have. And there you are. It's staring you in the face. You have the freedom to do it, but there's like something that's there. It is called part of the routine, part of the um, ingrained instinct, you know, something that we have learned over a long period of time that needs to step aside. We need to allow it to move aside. We need to allow the river of life to, you know, push it down through the river and just go on its way whatever it might be, and embrace that new thing that's coming in. And there's a part of you, and I'm going to speak for myself, that feels like you're just a deer with the headlights you're just kind of flashing into your eyes. It's like, okay, I'm, here I am. What do I start with? Where do I go? Where's the first step? And that is your next clue, finding your very first step or your very first next step. So in a way, as you're letting go of things, especially if it's raising children, you're learning how to live your life again. And it's not easy, okay? It's not meant to be easy. It's very difficult. And so I want to encourage you, if you're having a struggle, just learning how to 
figure out the answer to the question, okay, what do I do next? What do I do now? Believe me, you're not alone. That's where life coaching comes in. That's where mentoring comes in. That's where one anothering comes in. We're here to help each other to do those types of things. Whether we're raising children, whether we're going through a move, whether we're going through uh, education or, or whatever it is in your life, traveling, creating a blog, writing a book, whatever it is, we're going through a process. And as we go through those processes, eventually they'll come to an end and it's time for a new process. And during the course of coming to that end, there is that aspect of letting go and empowering ourselves to go into and step into the next phase of whatever it is we're endeavoring or going through or, or reaching for means finding the power, finding the plan, finding the ability, you know, whatever it is inside the strength to make that next step. And sometimes that's all it really takes because one step leads to another, just like that baby learning how to walk. As you're walking through grief, you're going through steps as well. Just get through the next, next excuse me, step for today. And sometimes that means talking with a friend. Sometimes it means talking to your higher power. Sometimes it means just talking to yourself. Okay, pull yourself up by the bootstraps today. We are going to make some progress in this thing. Sometimes it means sitting and stepping back and just allowing whatever the process is to just go through the flow and just let the river flood through you and allow it to cleanse some of the things that you're going through so that you can grow and reach out for that next thing that empowers you in your life. It's, you know, sometimes feels like a slippery slope, but when you find the ability to take the next step, to take um, the next empowerment move in your life, then you're on the right track. Give yourself some grace and forgiveness. Number one, when you're looking back at some of the things that come up, you know, the memories and things that you might have not done as well as you thought that you could have done them, those are losses as well. And those are things we need to let go of. But remind yourself, you've gone through that, you've made it through that. And the next step is to let go of that. And once you let go of some of the boat anchors that are kind of holding you down, and you know, those can be emotional things that keep you stuck in the past, process them, but let them go. And once they start to drift through the river and blow out through the wind, you know, we're just kind of letting time pass by and pass through. And we just let those experiences run through us just invite them to let go. I have learned from you now. I have processed you now. And today I let you go because I'm taking the next step into my life and my purpose and my passion. You cannot lose if that next step is giving to someone else. So I want to encourage you to use your wisdom, to use your passion and your purpose to um, whatever it is that you've learned, your knowledge and give that knowledge to someone else. You cannot lose doing that. And allow that knowledge, whatever it might be, as you give, to just bring you into the next facet of your life. That empowers you, it empowers other people, and it's also something that ignites something in your soul. It opens up the heart space, and you can be grateful for that every single day. Believe me, others will be grateful for it as well. So a couple of things to remember, let go of those things of the past, let go of what you might have been, for reaching for what you're going to be because we're always transitioning. Remember to make the next best step in your life towards your passion, your purpose, and whatever it is you're reaching for, your dreams. And don't forget to be grateful. Remember, it's a portal that opens that, that portal of your heart. It is the thing that ignites that portal to open up and brings light to it. And remember to give to others because in gratitude, 
they're going to receive it. There's always somebody that needs you. So don't ever think that there isn't. If you're a parent and you feel like you're not needed anymore because your ch children are grown, believe me, there are a lot of other people out there, whether they're children or adult children, and they need you as well. So I just want to say I am so grateful for you. I hold a passion in my heart to give to you whatever comes to me during the course of a day or a moment as I reach for my passion, my purpose, and move on through the river as I allow the past to go. It is such a pleasure to be able to give my uh, knowledge, experience, wisdom, whatever comes to me to you. And I just love channeling that to you. If you need something and you need to have a, a spiritual session or maybe a coaching session, you can always get in touch with me and I'd love to book that for you. Until then, I just like to say I'm loving you so much from here. I will talk to you again very soon and have a wonderful rest of the day. Of the day. Excuse me. Bye-bye.